Hey, it is September the tw 20th? Is it the 20th? I don't know now because my watch isn't telling me anything. Uh, and we're here in the sunroom, believe it or not, with Custard. Hi, Custard. Say hi to everybody. This is DJ's little poetry desk. Uh, which I guess uh, she just added to the sunroom because she likes a little sunny spot to study and currently Custard is taking that space. We've got a stack of cat books including the Kitten Academy class yearbooks. Look at those. Very cool. And the real reason we're here of course is we're here to see Basket Weave. Basket is the last of the Catterns that's still here at the Academy, and he is in play mode right now. He's been running back and forth and climbing up cat trees and playing in the sink and getting under blankets and grabbing toys and everything. He just he wants to zoom around and play. Uh, also, sorry for all the noise that's probably in the background. DJ's cooking in the kitchen, enjoying some hangout time with the kittens, and uh, Angela Lansbury. So uh, that's why we're starting down here and then we're going to go upstairs and see the kittens afterwards. But we started down here so everything would be easy and DJ wouldn't have to worry about when we were coming to see Basket Weave. We'd just get it out of the way first. So as you know, Basket Weave is getting adopted on Wednesday. Uh, but I'm not sure whether we'll be doing the close-up on Wednesday before or after he leaves. So this is going to be his goodbye close-up. That way we've got it covered. Even if he leaves before we get a chance to do it. Hi. He does like to play with Custard, by the way. I know somebody would want to ask that. Uh, they have been playing quite a bit. They chase each other around and wrestle. It's good for Custard and it's good for Basket Weave. He definitely likes to have a cat to play with, so it's convenient that he's got an older brother and sister where he's being adopted. He's going to Chicago to join Draper and Squire, who are former, former Kitten Academy graduates. So that's pretty cool. And uh, we're going to do his goodbye wave. Let's do it right here at the desk, okay? Because that's fun. Again, if I can put this little tripod here, flip the camera around. There we go. Oh, oh, the, the, the tripod's not holding though. Hang on, hold, tighten that up. Okay, we got this. We got this. All right, here we go. Hi, bud. So, this is Basket Weave. Basket Weave, bye bye. Bye bye, buddy. Okay, that was good. That was a good wave right there. That was very good. Of course, like I said, he's not even until Wednesday and, uh, it's an unusual because uh, normally, you know, we won't deliver kittens anywhere. You have to come all the way to the academy to pick it up. Um, but we made an exception here because Basket Weave's getting adopted by someone who's adopted two cats from us previously. So for previous adopters, sometimes we have a little bit of wiggle room. And uh, what happened, though, is uh, that Basket's adopter is going to fly in to an airport, the Hartford Airport, I believe, and uh, Taylor and Artie's adopter, the person who adopted Taylor and Artie, is going to come pick up Basket Weave and bring him to the airport for his adopter to collect at the airport. So his adopter will never have to leave the airport. Just fly in, uh, take Basket Weave, and then fly back. So that, I think, first off, that's pretty cool, but mostly it's really, really sweet that the person that adopted Taylor and Artie was uh, volunteered to do that, just volunteered to say like, hey, uh, if you're flying into Hartford, I come, I'll go to the academy, I'll pick up Basket Weave, I'll bring Basket Weave to you at the airport, and then you can fly home with him. How sweet is that? Um, I know I've mentioned that person before, the adopter of Taylor and Artie is being just super sweet and super helpful and always volunteering to help us out any way we need. Really saved our bacon uh, when we had that two week power outage last year, was that just last year? And she brought us her uh, generator to use for a little while. That was really nice too. And just constantly so helpful. 
So, uh, so yeah, helping out by bringing Basket Weave to see his adopter. And uh, Basket, we're gonna go. We're gonna go see some kittens now. All right, let's go see some kittens. But that's Basket there. All right, and custard, of course. There we go. All right, there we go. We might get another chance to see him on Wednesday, or we might not. Uh, this is the see Angela Lansbury. Some of you guessed what I was talking about. That's what we were talking about. Angela Lansbury, I just mentioned it. Okay, you can turn it back on. I'm going upstairs now. She had it on pause because we, you know, we don't want to play the sounds from Murder She Wrote all over the Kitten Academy live stream. That wouldn't be cool. Be a pretty clear copyright violation. It does not count as fair use. I think it should. You know, I think I don't know. There's a Especially these days, the, the environment that we live in, uh, fair use should definitely encompass incidental plays in the background, like incidental background noises, but they don't. That's not an exception that's in the fair use laws. So that's, um, I don't know, whatever. Intellectual property. Uh, I, I find intellectual property law to be super interesting. Uh, and... Uh, Problematic in general, but that's a story for another time. There we go. So, here we are now in the annex. This is Mural, cute little Mural with her crooked mouth. Boop. And her six kittens that are uh, just over two weeks old now. The Edge has got his eye goobered shut again. Uh, that's, again, I, I think I mentioned this in the last close-up, but having your eyes goobered shut, not entirely unusual at this age. Um, you know, it, it, obviously it indicates there's a little something going on, but if it's just an eye shut once in a while, uh, we've all had that experience, right? I know when I was a kid, I woke up plenty of times with my eye goobered a little bit. Um, so... Uh, unless there's another symptom or something else going on, or it turns out to really be, you know, a problem, then I'm not too worried about that one. About Etch or the others, uh, you'll notice it, that it happens to some of the other kittens too once in a while. Of course, uh, as you know, Mural herself has had eye goobers and sneezes since before she even came here. So, uh, you know, almost two months now. And considering they've been ongoing for two months uh, and she's been otherwise super healthy, my guess is that it's allergies more than anything else, um, but it's, uh, it's hard to know for sure. At any rate, none of them are uh, very put out by it, so uh, again, not a big concern. Look at these kids toddling around. That's, uh, that's tw uh, 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 um, I still need the cheat sheet. Trace, thank you. I knew it was a T. I just can't think. Uh, I'm not good with the names with this class still. I've got most of the older class down, but you know we we got all the names on basically the same day. You'd think I would learn them all the same. But these guys still giving me just a little trouble. I've almost got it. Almost got it. So anyway, let's do the usual thing. Let's weigh these babies. Let's weigh them together and see uh, how we're doing. Okay. Hello. That way we can get a chance to see each of them up close and in order too and sort of do a little health check and bother them a little bit. Speaking of bothering them, we've been taking the whole class to the master bedroom to hang out a little bit, which is, we've, I don't think we've done that for kittens this young ever, but uh, Mural's very accommodating and doesn't mind a bit, and it's been a fun way to give them a little bit of extra uh, uh, bothering time, I guess. You know, it's important to bother your kittens. There's another eye goobered. This is our first kitten to see too, so we might as well. This is Splotch. Splotch is oh the brownish tabby with definitely some eye goobers going on there, which we can see. Well, we'll clean those up. Oh, look, I've still got the tripod. We could even clean those up now if I just set the phone down for a minute. 11.3 uh, ounces. 11.3. I don't know. It sounds good. Yes, you sound good too. You got a lot of yelling to do. I know. Well, it's definitely scarier out here when you can only see some of it, isn't it? You want to see all of it. Here, let's uh, let's clean you up just a little bit here with the tripod going. Okay. You know, it's not the closest of close-ups, but 
take a baby wipe. Here we go. And we'll just keep this out and we'll do this for each of you kids, okay? Just a little bit of a wipe there. Just a tiny wipe. Close your eye. There we go. Now let's make sure we can blink it. Oh, it's still a little shut. So, uh, what else can I tell you about while I'm cleaning these kids' eye goobs? Um, let's see here. Uh, I, there's not too much other news going on, really. Everybody's... Oh, I'll tell you, the, the, the big news, of course, is that I've done photo shoots for both classes. Those photo shoots have gone very well. And uh, I should be publishing those on the website... I'll just say sometime this week because I do have a lot on the schedule and there's a lot of photos that are so nice. I want another chance to go through them before I decide which ones to publish. So it could take me a little bit longer than today to get that all done. There we go. Now we got two eyes. Look at that. Hi, buddy. And a big yell. So this is Splotch. There we go. Uh, next up, we have Trace, who we just saw walking around, toddling around. This is our little Trace right here. Trace is obviously a girl and obviously has the extra toe beans, just like uh, uh, Splotch did. So that's our little Trace right there. Okay, let's flip this around and weigh Trace. So here we go. Trace, right on there. 11.8, good, good, 11.8, look at that beautiful face, and those pretty beans too, look at that, yeah, okay, okay, right in there, so that's Trace, uh, then we get to the boys, uh, first boy is Etch, Etch is our orange boy, the only orange in the whole group, and we're going to weigh him, and then we'll clean up his eye a little bit. There we go. 12.2. That's a good weight. There we go. So I saw a couple questions while I was talking. First off, I saw um, uh, Lulu May. Are you going to take Rue kittens to your bedroom, too? We do. Yep, yeah, they've also had plenty of chances to go to the spa. For them, it's not as strange because... Uh, they're at an age where we've done that before. They're just over four weeks, which means they're using the litter box and they're eating, uh, where these kids aren't doing either of those things yet. But uh, Rue and her kids are very fun that way. Now, Rue gets very upset when she sees the faculty, or um, especially Basket Weave is the one that she finds most upsetting, when she sees Basket Weave through the glass door in the master bedroom. She does not happy about that. So that gives me a little pause as far as getting her introduced to everybody. But um, Rue, uh, like I said, she seems like she's most put out by basket weave. So my hope is that once the little kitten is gone, she'll, she'll have an easier time of it with the faculty, maybe. Um, that's what I'm hoping anyway. So we'll find out. Close your eye, buddy. Come on. There we go. Uh, and I also would like to move Rue downstairs with her kittens for some of the same reason, to sort of give her more glass doors and more chances to get to know the faculty. Um, but that also, I think, should wait until after Basket Weave is gone on Wednesday. So I might start cleaning up the main room for her to move into, but she's probably not going to get moved down there until the end of the week at the soonest. Uh, but we usually don't move the kittens downstairs until they've at least got their poops kind of figured out, too. And her kids do not yet have their poops figured out. They're, they're probably a week away from that. So we may not get her moved downstairs until next week. It all depends. We've got to play this by ear, sort of do what we think is going to be the best thing um, from moment to moment. You know, we sort, of, we sort of figure it out and see, well, is it better to move her downstairs and let her kittens poop all over if it means that she gets more acclim acc acclimated to the faculty? Um, or is it better to let her get the poops figured out and then move her downstairs? Uh, it is, it's hard to say, so we're going we're gonna to figure that out. Um, so, no big deal. Uh, okay, uh, so that's Etch. Now, let's move on to Doodle, who is looking at us. Hi, dude. You're looking right at us over there. I see you. Okay, come here, buddy. Come here. Hi. Hi, hi, hi. So, oh, the scale turned off because we took so long cleaning that up. Okay, 
I saw someone ask, what am I using to wipe their eyes out? Um, we've used and we have somewhere wipes that are made for eyes. They're not in here right now, so I just grabbed one of our water wipes, uh, 10.7. So 10.7 for um, uh, Doodle. This is Doodle. He's the other boy, by the way. Etch and Doodle, the black one and the orange one, are the two boys in this class, and everybody else is a girl. It's okay, dude. And uh, we also think everybody in this class is going to be long-haired once they get old enough, or big fluffy kittens. And uh, Doodle here is all black with extra beans. All right, so that's Doodle. Those are our two boys, Etch and Doodle. Uh, and then we're on to the next little girl who's right here. Hi. Uh, this is, um, uh, uh, wait, 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 wait. Um, See, I told you I'm still not good with these names. Squiggle. Boy, I squiggle, and I wasn't going to get it either. I had to look at the cheat sheet. So that's little Squiggle. Uh, squiggle, obviously a girl, and Squiggle today weighs 12.1 ounces. 12.1 ounces. There we go. Hi, 12.1. Okay, there we go. That's a beautiful face you got, Squigs. I know, I know. You got a lot to complain about. Okay, so that's Squiggle. Uh, yeah, I didn't see the question, but vaccines and their first vet visit usually do happen at about six weeks old. We don't take them to the vet before then unless something has gone wrong. So, uh, fingers crossed, these kids will get their first vet visit at six weeks and not sooner than that. Um, okay. Uh, finally, Scrawl is the last little kitten that we got to take a look at, and Scrawl is this one right here, nursing in the middle, and I don't want to take her away because she needs to nurse, but look at, she's got this kitten face, she's got a little baby face, she's the smallest in the group, and she's the, sort of the runt, or the, the, I don't know what you call the smallest of the litter, unless you call it a runt, I guess you do, 10, 9.7, uh, so you can see clearly the smallest, but uh, also has this baby face that comes with that that is so cute you little baby face look at that it is the cutest little baby face i know but you're too cute i can't i can't stand it <sighs> so that's scrawl our little girl there we go just like that okay so that is the group of mural hi mew and all of her little kittens that, are, like I said, they're just over two weeks old now, which means uh, that can't, I mean, it feels like it can't be right. These kids seem so much bigger than two weeks, uh, except for little uh, Scrawl there at the end, who's just about the right size, but everybody else is so big and active and happy. And, uh, uh, you know, they, I almost feel like we could just take the box down and they would be eating and pooping. Uh, that's not true, but they, they sure give that impression of being super mature Super mature. Uh, ice cream cake, how can you tell if a kitten will become long-haired at this age? Well, it's a good question because it can be very tricky to tell, especially if you haven't seen a lot of kittens. Um, but you can tell right away um, that their, their hair is much longer than most. Uh, DJ likes to test by sort of putting her finger in it and seeing how deep their fur is all over. And that will give you an indication I think one of the clearest ways to tell, though, uh, if it's hard for you to see that, is their tails are um, like especially um, triangular compared to uh, most, I guess. Eh, it, it can be tricky to tell, I guess. That's, that's all. It, it, it is tricky to tell at this age. But uh, if you look at their little heads, too, look at all this hair on top of his head. Like that just says that that's going to be a floof to me. So, I said his, but this is a girl, of course. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's tricky to tell. Um, and uh, I wouldn't be entirely surprised if some of these turned out to grow into their fur instead of being long hair. But considering their mom is long hair and DJ is very much better at telling than I am, and she says that they're all long hair, she's probably right. Yeah, bedhead's a good way to put it. If the kitten is two weeks old and has bedhead, probably going to be a floofer. Let's go compare. Let's go compare this to some kittens that, yes, are two weeks older, but also not floofers. Uh, regular old short-haired kittens next door. Let's go take a look at them with Rue. 
leave these guys here, and if you wanted to keep watching them, of course, you can tune into the Kitten Academy live stream. You know how it works. They're on it almost all the time, except for when we steal them away to take them to the master bedroom. Uh, then they aren't. <laughs> they aren't on the stream. That's obvious. Obvious thing to say. There we go. Get the camera pointed back at the box so that we can see them that way if we want to. And Mew Mew. There you go, sweetheart. Mew Mew's been eating better, too, which is good, because she's got a lot of nursing to do. And she is just so sweet and unflappable. Last night, um, Basket Weave was, was sort of causing her... He would come up to her, and then he'd start hissing at her, um, and she just she's just unflappable. She doesn't care if he's going to hiss at her or even take a swat at her. She just kind of takes a few steps away and sits down, and she's like, I don't care, kid. I doesn't care about any of it. I've never seen her just have trouble with anybody. You guys saw her took a swipe at Custard once when he was really asking for it. And even then, she didn't hold a grudge. She's just like, back off, man. Uh, and then he does, and that's it. Real sweet that way. I would definitely say uh, Mural could be adopted by someone who has other cats, and I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even question it. You know, I wouldn't think twice about it. Clearly not going to be a problem. All right, hang on, we gotta do a little hand sanitizer. Okay, there we go. And we're gonna go right in here next door to Roos. Now, um, just, I just wanna remind everybody what I said already about the eye goobers in the, the last room there. That's a normal thing, nothing to worry about. And uh, we're keeping an eye on it, but at this point, I don't think that it's any sort of thing to be concerned about. So here we are with Roo and Roo's kittens, and the scale's just out of reach. We're running out of space here. I'm gonna have to make their area bigger because now we've got a litter box here. We've got the cameras. We've got all these beds. We've got the hanging basket. We've got their food and water and their toys and everything. And then we've got all that in this little barrier so they don't get into spaces that we haven't kitten proofed yet, like behind the beanbag chair, under the, the cat tree, or uh, just uh, hidden, you know, like behind all this stuff and uh, behind the cat box. And we don't need any of that. So that's why the barrier's up. But uh, they are getting old enough and mobile enough that mostly the barrier can come down soon. I do think I need to move the cat tree out, though. Their mom doesn't use it. They're not likely to use it. And uh, they are small enough to get under it. So I'm going to have to do that at some point, too, one way or the other. Anyway, we'll figure it out. Rue loves her little catnip banana. Such a sweetie sweet. And uh, as you know... Hi, what's the matter? I thought I saw. Oh, oh wow, I did not see that. Ew. You saw that? Yeah. Wow, how did you see that? I don't know, I guess they used it to cover that up. Yeah, okay, did they put it on the, top? Don't place the camera. I won't. So DJ just saw a poop. Uh, she must have... Seen it on the other cameras. That was a good job. No, I saw it on the thing. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, DJ saw a poop and she ran up here to go clean it up. So that's nice of her. She's cleaning that up right now. And while she's cleaning that, we are going to weigh the kittens. These guys are at that age where where we typically expect to get poop everywhere. And the other day, I had to clean up a couple poops that were on the floor. Uh, it is the, the litter box training age, and uh, so far, they haven't been too bad. But, uh, but yeah, we should definitely expect to start seeing poops in places where poops should not be. Uh, that is, like I was saying, that's one of the reasons that we don't normally move them downstairs until they're past that stage. Um, and they are not yet past that stage. They're just entering that stage, so there we are. Okay. Let's get some weights for these kids and introduce them again, if we can. Uh, so, in order, in weight sheet order, also I need to point out, these kids are now uh, already lap kittens. They're climbing up here on their own. They like to run out and see me. Even the other ones, they eventually will come around and play in my lap. But Gambi here, this is Gambit. Gambit is always the first one to come running and climb up into my lap. He is just a social, people-loving little kitten. And this one uh, is also, uh, but I think this is, yeah, there we go. This is Gimmick. So 
it's hard for uh, Sham without checking, but Gamby is he's always number one on the scene when his people come. He's got to run right up. <sighs> also, uh, when we go to the spa, like we were in the spa with them yesterday for a long time, for maybe an hour or two, and most of the time, the kittens, we carried them all in the, uh, the unicorn to the spa. Most of them stayed in the unicorn, or they came out a little bit, and they nursed on their mom, Rue, and, uh, you know, just sort of hung out and had a good time, and that was fine. And uh, I put my hand in the unicorn and patted them all and bothered them, and it was, it was good, most of them. Uh, all except for Gambit, who did not spend one minute hanging out with mom or the rest of the kids and instead went and snuggled on DJ for the longest time and then snuggled on me for the longest time. And that's all That's all he wanted to do. He wanted to snuggle with me and DJ. Didn't want anything to do with his family. So Gamby is an uh, early people kitty, like just all about the people all the time. It's really sweet. Anyway, let's uh, let's weigh the rest of the kids, and we got to go in weight sheet order for my sake, because so I can remember all the names, and so we don't miss anybody. So we start here with our classic tabby with the big bold stripes, and that is Caper. There's the little Caper. Oh, focus. There we go. Looking very worried. That's a very worried eyes you got there, Caper. Oh, and of course the scale turned off right before we set him on it. Okay. Let's try again. Here we go. Caper, right there. Caper weighs 15.3. All right, 15.3 for little Capey. Hi, Cape Man. Look how pretty you are. Such a pretty, pretty kitty with those blue eyes, too. All that noise is DJ cleaning up poops. She's spraying the poops. <clears throat> Uh, oh, you may have noticed that Caper has a kink in his tail. That's uh, not just an optical illusion. It does take a little 90-degree bend there, uh, as you can see. Boop, just like that. And uh, I'm pointing that out in case you notice it later. Yep, your eyes aren't playing tricks on you. That does exist. And it's no big thing. Lots of kittens have kinky tails. In fact, Mural's got a kink tail, the same, just the same, in almost the same spot. Uh, and then Loganberry's got one, too. His is right at the tip, so you wouldn't really be able to see it. But it's been there his whole life since he was even smaller than this guy. So not a thing to worry about. Um, just like the eyes in the other room. Not a thing to worry about uh, unless, you know, there's something else about it that comes up later. And then we find out we have to worry about it. So he's just, he, want, he wants to come over and watch her cleaning. And he is like, what is happening? Look at that. All right. So uh, there we go. We did one kitten. Uh, let's move on to next up would be hijinks, which is I, eeny meeny. I think that's hijinks over there, actually, in the, in the unicorn. So let's reach over there and grab him, I think. Oop, oop, oop. It's hard to tell hijinks from hustle at a glance, and it's even harder lately since their weights have been changing. But I do believe this is hijinks, so let's put him on the scale first. 17.4. Oh, big, big, big hijinks. Okay. So that's little hijinks. And then that makes this one hustle right here. Who's come over to see what I'm doing? Hi, hustle. Why don't you sit right on up there for a minute? 17.8 for hustle. Yes. And I do feel like I got those right. Now, here's a way to tell them apart. And this is another thing that we're keeping an eye on. So don't worry about it. If you notice it, we've noticed it, um, which is that hustles uh, having a hard time getting his feet under him. Oh, and look at that. He's making a liar out of me. He's starting to get it figured out. Yeah, look at that. He's got it. He's did that just very well. Um, but you will notice that he does tend to sit with his legs like frog legs, like all pointed out and uh, with his knees touching the floor and his feet pointed straight out. Uh, and he's still doing it, but he's definitely learning, building up those muscles. And it is, it's just like, um, I think banter is the example I use, where banter took a very long time to decide to get her legs under her to the point where people were starting to worry about her. And, uh, you know, send us links to websites that talk about medical conditions that kitties can have. So let me just assure you, uh, we're definitely aware of the medical conditions that kitties can have. But in his case, it doesn't seem like it's anything to worry about. He's just a little bit slow getting all that bulk up on his legs. Uh, he does, like banter, have a big belly. It's a lot to try to pick up. <laughs> He's just a little slow on it. So you'll probably see some of that. So that's our boy, uh, Hustle.
And this is our boy, oops, hijinks there. Okay, easy for me to do all this. There we go. And let's move them away from the scale just a little bit. They can play over here by mom. That way they don't bump the scale while we're trying to weigh everybody else. And next up in our list would be Gambit, uh, uh, Gimmick, I mean. And Gimmick we can tell because Gimmick has white spots. Do you see that little white spot there? That makes this one Gimmick. There's an even more clear one under his chin. There it is right there. Do you see that? So that's Gimme, Gimmick. Of course, these guys are all decided to go over and start bumping on the scale, and it's turned off, and it's not going to get the right weight because they're pushing on it now. As I told them not to, and all of a sudden that makes it the most interesting thing in the room. Yeah, we know how it is, don't we, buddy? Okay, so let's try again. With gimmick, not gimmick. Okay, check again, gimmick. Second time's the charm. Yes, there we go, gimmick with the white spots. Gimmick weighs 16.4. 16.4, very good. We'll go with that. So that's a little gimmick. Focus, there we go. Look at that, buddy. These uh, these little black kittens are so pretty and sweet. All right, the next one we need to measure is the one girl in this class. There's only one girl, her name is Sham. She is a black kitten and she is sleeping by herself right now over in the unicorn. So I gotta move everybody out of my lap so I can lean forward and, uh, and whoops, pick her up. Of course, I can't do that when they keep especially Gambit here keeps jumping into my lap. It's the only thing he cares about. Now everybody thinks it's a fun game. Here, get in there for a minute. I'll come back for you. There we go. Okay, so there's Sham having a nap. Come on, Shammy. Hi, yes. Come on, little girl. You got to represent. You're the only girl in this class, all right? And she's clearly a little nervous about what DJ's doing. She's looking over that way. Do you see that? Going, what is going on there? What is that? All right, well, let's get your weight. Sham weighs 16.2 today. Good job, Shammy. Very nice work. Look at you. Do you want me to put you back in the unicorn? You don't want visiting hours right now? Okay, that's fine, too. So that's Sham, our little girl. You can go back to the unicorn if you want. And that means the last one we have to weigh now is Gimmick right here. Uh, gimmick, nope, Gambit. There, there we go. G, G names. G, DJ decided to name the two black boys, both with G names. Just to throw me off, I'm sure. So, uh, Gambit. There we go. Sit right there. Oh, 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 don't touch the scale, though. Nobody else. Wait, okay. I thought I saw 16.8, but let's get a second weight measurement. Yes. Okay. 16.8. That's what we're going with. Good job. So that's uh, Gambit, the other G. All right. Wow. Good camera work today. This camera's going everywhere. He's got an eye goober too. Look at that. His eye's not stuck shut from it, but he's definitely got a little eye goober he wants me to take. There we go. I'll just get that with my finger. So a little bit of eye goobers all around. Like I said, eye goobers, not too unusual, especially if there's just a few here and there. We are not at all worried about that. If they don't start, you know, sneezing or discharge or not eating or any of those other things, then there's nothing to panic about. But if they do start any of those other things, rest assured, we'll have them into the vet before you even know what happened. It wasn't mine, I can tell you that. Oh, nice cleanup job, though. All right, DJ's completely cleared any sign of poop, and I'm getting my thumb bitten here. Buddy, all right, you're going to have to learn not to chew on fingers, but that's very cute. Speaking of learning not to chew on fingers, we've started giving them uh, chicken baby food as a treat since these guys have started to learn to eat on their own. And they're mostly big fans of it. Uh, the ones that eat are real big fans of the chicken baby food. So is their mom, Rue, of course. And uh, they are, they do chomp the fingers a little bit, though. Which one is it? Oh, it's in the cabinet with everything. I'll get it for you. Yep. It does have to be mixed. Well, it's pretty easy, but I think the jar is all the way on the top shelf that you can't reach anyway. TJ's looking for more rug cleaner, which I will get for her. As, uh, actually, we should wrap this up because it is about time. So 
let me say if uh, if you guys want to keep watching these kittens learn to use the litter box and uh, learn to eat and hang out with their mom who's just passed out tired now look at her oh so exhausted that is one tired roo oh my goodness such a tired roo um if you want to keep watching them you know what to do you tune into the kitten academy live stream and you can watch uh, them all day long if that's what you like to do it's what we like to do and if not we should do another close-up on wednesday uh wednesday is a very very busy day for me though not only are we handing off basket weave to uh be transported but it's also a vet day for uh, it's ari that's got his dental scheduled i think right uh, Ari's got his dental work scheduled for Wednesday also, so I've got to get up early in the morning, drive straight to the vet, drop off Ari, come back, get basket weave ready, hand off basket weave about noon, and then, if we're lucky, um, I'm driving straight back to the vet to pick up Ari, and then I'll come back, and then maybe we'll get a close-up, but I want to reserve the right right now to say maybe no close-up on Wednesday, depending on how busy we get and how all those hours come together. So uh, I just want to... Put that thought out there just in case, all right? But uh, fingers crossed, we'll get it done. I'll see you Wednesday. And uh, if not, you know where to find me all the time. And we will see all of you next time, all right? Hey, buddy, look how pretty you are sitting there. That's Hustle sitting in the, uh, the giraffe. What are you looking at, pal? Look at those bright eyes. Such a sweetie. He's thinking about how much work it is to lift up his giant belly. Just like custard. Just custard thoughts. Somebody's climbing all around my knee like it was a jungle gym. Who is this? Oh, Look at that. How are you doing Maybe. that? Maybe it's by your butt. Yeah, I know. I'm always careful. <laughs> That's hijinks, of course. Some sock wrestling happening. These kids are so mature already. Back up, back up. Alright everybody, well we'll see you next time. Gotta go get that rug cleaner for DJ. Yeah, you say it's done, but I bet you're gonna want more rug cleaner someday. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. Boop. Boop, boop, boop.